I'm from Slovenia, from Institute of Atopica. Uh, I'm a patient with a severe form of atopic dermatitis. Uh, I have struggled with this disease since early childhood into adulthood. Um, the disease is very serious and uh, not only affects the skin, but it also um, comes with many comorbidities. Um, I am also a mother of a five-year-old son who has atopic dermatitis since his birth. Uh, when he was a baby, he had all the same symptoms that I had. He had rashes, sores, uh, he itched constantly, uh, he had digestive problems and uh, our nights were really, really hard and uh, sleepless. Um, and it was really, really hard to see my son struggling uh, with the same illness I have. It is actually much worse, worse to see your son struggling that, than um, facing your own illness. But um, because I have atopic dermatitis for 38 years, uh, I have a lot of experience and knowledge that are priceless for my son. And I dealt with the problem quite quickly and I tried to use everything I know. Uh, and fortunately, my son's disease took a different course uh, and now he has a mild atopic dermatitis. Sleep disturbances are uh, extremely common with patients um, that uh, uh, struggle with atopic dermatitis and they're, they're important factor leading to impaired quality of life. So on average, uh, 72 to 77% of children and 90% of adults have a lower sleep efficiency and this number is really, really big. Um, and patients with atopic dermatitis and um, uh, uh, their caregivers are due to the lack of sleep exhausted and that puts them at high risk even for, even for developing other diseases and also um, more flare-ups of atopic dermatitis. Um, and it's um, very difficult to understand that when we say that we are not sleeping as a patient or as a caregiver, it means that we really do not sleep. Um, so I know patients with a severe atopic eczema and also their care caregivers who have not slept for days or have slept like an hour or two hours in night. Um, and caregivers, they spend their nights taking care of their children, soothing them, um, uh, um, uh, carrying them, uh, uh, try to, trying to prevent them from scratching, crying. Uh, and the problem is that this is not only one time situation, but it, this can go on for weeks, for months and for years. Um, and a few, just a few days ago, I was talking to a mother of a 13 year old girl and she said that um, her daughter has not slept a single, one single night through in uh, the 13 years since she was born. So in other words, her whole entire life. So I don't think anyone can uh, really fully understand what this means for brain development, cognitive function, um, short, long-term memory, uh, ability to concentrate, development of, for example, anxiety, depression, ADHD. And uh, this type of sleep deprivation is also uh, associated uh, to suicidal uh, thoughts. So this is really something we need to start to take seriously. Um, so, if we say, for example, for adult patients, um, um, usually they have serious problems sleeping at night. So, because of the itches, uh, hurts, and the, the skin bleeds, um, and there is also something internally that makes you uh, awake. So, usually the patients they can go to sleep uh, around three to four o'clock in the morning and after that they still have to go to work and function normally as much as they can um, and the same goes with the caregivers caregivers take care of their children all night long uh, carrying them as i said preventing them from scratching soothing them soothing them and after that they still have to function normally it is very difficult for them to to uh, to get um uh, for example, sick leaves, because because atopic dermatitis is still considered as just a trivial disease, something um, not important that you can take a sick leave, sick leave from. All the typical areas that were affected with my son and um, was the same as very typical for atopic dermatitis patients. Um, 
but for example with my son we try to fix the problems step by step with a holistic approach uh, skin care is just only one part of mosaic so diet environment support from your doctor uh, and acceptance of the disease all play a very important uh, role So the biggest challenge to overcome is that no one really understands that sleep disturbance is an enormous problem. I remember uh, talking to the pediatrician, she, she works a lot with the caregivers and the children with atopic dermatitis, and she was concerned about caregivers um, that they wake up once, twice or three times at night because of their children. And um, but that's not the case. Not sleeping because of atopic dermatitis. That does that mean waking up a few times a night or or just for a few minutes? Uh, if a child has uh, itch attacks, it me this means waking up for longer uh, periods and having trouble falling back asleep. If a child wakes up every 15 to 30 minutes, this means a mother or a father doesn't sleep at all because you cannot fall asleep immediately after he falls asleep, the child falls asleep. You are not a robot. So after that, of course, you become angry, anxious, exhausted, and uh, it is very, very hard to fall asleep um, later on. And uh, because atopic dermatitis, as, we, as I already explained, is, not, is considered only as a skin condition, it is very hard for caregivers or patients to get sick leave and so they can care for their children and also for themselves. And uh, what is also a problem is that patients are also targeted by so, uh, so, um, um, by uh, other people because they are usually co-sleeping with their children so they can help the child and this is the only way um, at least the child and the caregiver get some sleep so a sleeping problem is uh, a sleeping problem affects whole family and when the patient does not sleep at night is tired uh, during the day uh, and it's under a stress and that triggers atopic dermatitis so it is a vicious cycle and the same goes with uh, caregivers Atopic dermatitis is a disease of immune system and that requires a comprehens comprehensive treatment to reduce inflammation in the body. So if you reduce the inflammations, you will eat less and sleep better. So there are ways you can improve your sleep, but uh, this is a serious condition and um, you need to know that you can do everything and more, but um, there, uh, without making any difference and you have to understand that this is not, not because you are doing anything wrong so um for some suggestions uh, i would say it is really important to take care of your skin during the day and especially at night shower apply lotion before you go to bed use antimicrobial preparations if needed. Uh, wet wrapping helps many patients to reduce the flare-ups and to improve their sleep. Uh, it is also very important to create a sleeping environment that is suitable, safe for patients with atopic dermatitis, that you reduce allergens and other triggers. So that means clean your bedroom, remove rugs, carpets, soft furniture, reduce clutter as much as possible, wipe down the surface with a damp cloth as often as possible so that you remove pollen, dust and um, mold. If you have a pet, do not allow them in the bedroom, so the, the bedroom should be pet free. Uh, also, it is important that you not put uh, indoor flowers uh, in the bed in the bedroom because they continue fungus in the soil. Uh, the next thing that is important is that you choose the right uh, bed and beddings. So make sure that the pillows are allerg allergen free and that, that they are easy to wash and that the bedding is made out of natural fibers. Usually the most common uh, um, textile that is being used is cotton, but also linen, silk, uh, and, um, uh, and bamboo fabric is being used. Um, so also nightwear is important that you wear very easy, light, breathable, uh, breathable nightwear. Um, for example, for the children, it's uh, very useful to have cotton gloves, mittens, so that they um, 
uh, prevent scratching while they're sleeping. Um, soft toys should not be in the bedroom um, because um, of the mites. So if the child refuses to sleep without them, it is important that you watch the toys um, in the 60 degrees. If it is not possible, then that you pack them in the, uh, in the bag and put them in the freezer. Um, so also very important is that you keep the bedroom cool. The temperature should not exceed, exceed 19 degrees. Provide plenty of fresh air, uh, use fan, air condition as possible. And before you go to bed, just um, open the window uh, and the, the air uh, gets into the room. But be careful if it, you are being allergic to pollen, uh, just have that uh, in mind. Uh, and some patients also use humidifiers in the room, uh, which can soothe atopic skin. But if you are allergic to mite, you should know that mites love humidity and um, that uh, 70 to 90% of humidity is ideal for their development. Um, it is also very uh, difficult for patients to regulate the, their temperature so they can get very easily uh, hot or cold. Uh, so it is um, useful to have a multi-layer blanket uh, and that you keep a cold uh, packs and cold moisturizers handy so you can use them when, when, when it is necessary. Uh, antihistamines, um, they are very useful. They, we, they will not relieve from itching, but they can make you feel sleepy. Uh, and of course, uh, try to practice a good hygiene, a bad hygiene. Uh, try to go to bed regularly, turn off all the computers, all the lights, and do not uh, eat heavy meals before the, the sleeping. Um, and if possible, try to uh, meditate or try to talk with your child so it is so he could be very uh, calm and uh, if possible if you find a sleeping journal journal it is also very useful so you can find the, uh, so you can identify uh, the, the child's sleeping patterns.